This is Success Beyond the Score, giving insights and tips to help you learn how to build your music career from the best in the field by Millicent Stevenson. Millicent is a multi-award winning saxophonist and endorser of Harry Hartman's Fiber Reads. She is currently serving on the Executive Committee of the Musicians' Union. With over 40 years experience in the creative industry, Millicent has honed her performance and business skills. She provides personal development training and coaching via her online platform, successbeyondthescore.com. Hi. <laughs> I hope you are well. Let me just do my little buttons here and uh, hopefully you can hear me. And if you can, please put a message in the chat. If all you can see is <laughs> put a message in the chat that you can't hear me, that would be really, really good. Oh dear. Okay, so I'm gonna crack on as I wait for those replies. Hi, Gary, good to see you. Lovely to see you there. Nice to see you. Um, today I've got a, a topic about putting on your own show. And um, actually, before I dive in, let me do a proper welcome. This is my 10th episode live. Now, if you've been with me from the first one, I said that I'm here for 11 days on YouTube. And my 11th is going to be Monday. Um, definitely Monday. And um, it's just great. Uh, it's just gone really, really quickly. But I want to thank you so much for showing up, for liking, subscribing and sharing and just commenting. Thank you, thank you so much. It means a lot that you're here. And of course, this podcast is to help not just you, but other musicians you can think of. So just keep sharing it because the more people know, the more we can be better in our profession, the more we can command our fees, the more we can just do sterling work. It's a great profession to be in. I'm here full time as a musician. I love it. And I just love helping others get there too. Um, if you have any questions today, I'm just looking at my notes, please just put them in the chat or the comments if you're watching the replay and I will check back and reply to you. Okie dokie then, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, I can see some more responses coming through, you can hear me. Actually, brilliant. Oh, right, Gary, relevant to me. Okay, let me, let me dive in, let me dive in. So maybe you're wondering about putting on your own show that's fine maybe you're thinking it's a huge jump you know maybe one day but right now it's a huge jump that's fine maybe you're currently planning a show and you're here thinking let me just get some tips make sure i'm doing it all right nice to have you here that's fine maybe your show went really well you've done some past shows that went really really well fantastic excellent or Maybe you put on a show and it didn't go well. There's areas of it you thought, I wish I'd done that differently. I'd be interested to know about those actually. Um, I have experienced all of those stages. When I started out in music, um, sort of in the sort of, gosh, I'm in my 50s now, so I've now got to count my fingers <laughs> to figure out when it was. Got the memories going. It's not the most menopause. Um, yeah, so when I was sort of in my 20s and 30s, putting on a show wasn't that important. I was just really keen to just be on stage, doing my thing with my band. That's fine, you know, because in fact, <clears throat> as musicians, we have different sort of um, ways we do our music. Some of us like to work in bands, some of us like to go solo. Some of us are in like session work, studio work, you name it, it's there. Um, but for me, it was about band work, then being solo and but not a show wasn't the thing, you know. And then um, I read somewhere when I started to sort of change my music at 42, I read somewhere people said, well, look, you can't just wait on the labels, which is true. Got to do it yourself, grow your fan base, put on your own shows. I goes, ooh, putting on my own show. I haven't thought about that. I think I'll give that a go some point. So I did, um, it, the first show was called, and it's called Not Just Jazz. Um, did I give it a name, the first one, my very first Not Just Jazz? I think I'll have to dig up my own flyer. Definitely had my name on it. Maybe I'd put Not Just, oh yeah, I think I did actually, because I had a problem because my name, Not Just Jazz, was very similar to someone else who had 
uh, a show name by a similar name. Um, so I think I wanted Not Strictly Jazz and they already had it. So we had to come to some agreement because they'd been running there for the longest time. I went to Not Just Jazz and they were happy. So that does happen with names. Uh, <laughs> but I've been running Not Just Jazz t-shirts you've seen what really all this time um five years um pre-lockdown five years and then the sixth year was going to be during the during well pandemic happened so it didn't happen so i've got to put my sixth one on so i found it a really exhilarating experience you know it's very affirming to do especially when you peek through the curtains or and you hear them speaking you see them talking and you think oh, they come to see me oh. You know, uh, I remember thinking, should I peek? I might get stage fright, you know. Um, I don't like having the, in a dressing room, you know, you can listen to the show. I don't like listening. I just like to wait till it's my time to go on. Too much to think about. But it's fantastic. And, you know, it's something I'd advise anyone to have a go at if it's something you're planning to do. But, but, get my three fingers up. There are three things you've got to make sure is sorted, <laughs> sorted, before you go into your show. And if you've been into a show and it's not worked, maybe it's one of these three things. And if it's not one of these three things, put that comment in the chat or so I can see that and we can have a quick conversation about it. Um, so yes, when you walk on stage, it's like lights, camera, action. You know, you become your alter ego or whoever you are on stage. It's just really, really good. The other extreme of this is where you put on a show and it doesn't work. I had a friend who decided to put on and put on the event, and um, you know the content was good, no no problems with that. But leading up to the show, the ticket sales were not going well, and it got to a point. I said to the person, "Look, you maybe." maybe it's time to stop and they go no 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 they'll continue they'll persevere and i thought okay and it gets to a point of no return with shows where you've got months leading up which is fine you can cancel if you like or not like but as you get closer and closer that window closes and it gets to that point where you know a few weeks before a couple of weeks before do you do it don't you do it now <clears throat> she decided to to do it and um unfortunately uh, the audience was very, very small. Uh, she didn't sell out. Um, it was really, really difficult. And it was because, again, <clears throat> a couple of these things were not in place that I'm going to tell you about. So, foundations for making your show work. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Advert time. <laughs> and 25 Secrets of the Successful Gigging Musician, Singer, Rapper, Spoken Word Artist is... A document I created to give you tips to improve what you do, to level up. I've also created 10 reasons why they will pay you before gig day, because I get paid before I go on stage. 98% of the time, there's 2% where there are reasons why it doesn't happen. Not bad, it's just how, it depends on the organisation I'm working with. But I get paid in advance and um, if you go onto my website www.successbeyondthescore.com You'll be able to download those. Oh, free gifts, forward slash free gifts. You'll be able to grab those. Um, and if you've already got those, you might want to check out my store where I've got some other courses there that you may like. And I've got a 50% discount on one of them going um, as of yesterday. Yeah, if you check back on yesterday's episode, there's a link there to get 50% discount off one of my courses. Okie dokie then. Three essential things for a show. If you've been following me, you will know one of my biggies is da -da -da -da, fans, <laughs> fan base, create that fan base, get people liking you. You know, it's, 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 it may be a new thing for you because it was a new thing for me once upon a time, but if you haven't done it already, or if you have one, you want to cultivate your fan base because these are the people who absolutely a hundred percent believe in what you do absolutely love what you do and they are the people who are going to be one of the early ones for buying a ticket of course if you got parents and you get on with your parents you know they might be the first in the queue or your brother your sister your wife your, you know whoever but i'm talking about these strangers who found you who like you um and they're going to be the first your fans if you have fans you can avoid that empty room um, if you're not sure about fans, go back to my episode two, 
of this season does your music have the juice to pull a crowd where i talk about fan bases and the details of that and the good thing about fans is if they like what you do of course they do because they're your fans they're going to bring somebody with them they're going to say come and share this experience with me this person's great you gotta you gotta so it's worth having a fan base now if you don't have fans maybe the question is is your music a hobby or a business now this is my episode seven where i looked at hobby and business so if you're a hobbyist and you decide oh, i'm gonna put on a show but you have nobody it's not gonna work really it's not gonna work unless you've got a lot and a lot a lot of pull on your friends and your relatives and you can get them there because <laughs> most of them ain't gonna come um but you do need to have that fan base um the other thing about your fans is they will need notice you know i suppose i could put this as a fourth point but it's, it's kind of within this um sometimes we we don't give notice of our performance and when it's going to happen so if you decide to put on a show at the weekend and then you are going to follow one of the a-listers who signed who said i'm in town and i'm doing a show at xxxy restaurant or pub of course their people are going to turn up because they're kept in contact with their fan base and these people follow them and they adore them and they can do a drop of a hat thing but for mere mortals like us who don't have that networking pulling power who don't have a label who's already tweeting out to the fans some so secret surprise oh, katie so perry's coming into birmingham or whatever we ain't got that you've got to give your fans notice um because they want to get ready for your show and they want to spread the news and if you just drop it on them they're probably going to say i love you i love you i really do but <laughs> so give them notice right? give them notice they need that initial announcement the show's going on a good six months sometimes a 12 month notice depends how long it takes you to get ready tickets are on sales countdowns those kind of things they need that information because within your fan base you'll have the early i'm gonna grab that vip ticket and you have the ones who goes yeah i really do want to come I, I really do want to come and they're doing the last minute.com very few of those so you've got different types of fans and different types of behavior but key thing essential fans 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 and build from that numero two and if you've got questions don't forget to put them in the chat and in the comments funding money 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 okay so what do i mean by this did you have a budget you're planning one have a budget what do i mean by budget list all your costs because you need to know your ticket prices you need to know you can pay everybody and if you don't get all the audience you want obviously you got your fans you're gonna have your audience there you know what the the, the difference is that you unfortunately have to make up although there's other ways of doing that so budgets will help you to know if you will break even which is costs and money coming in meet great no problem where the costs and money going in is above costs then great you've made profit whether you've got costs and money coming in is less than costs you've made a loss you've got to make that that up because you've got people to play pay you've got the venue to pay and whoever to pay there's lots of costs um when i did my first not just jazz show i um i think i made a profit on that one yes because i had 60 seats and it went up to 80 so well that was fine everything was kind of cool my not just jazz three was good not just jazz two i made i broke even on that one and then not just jazz four i made a loss and to this day i can say it calmly but within me i still have a little there was a particular person or no i shouldn't say person a group a conduit let's put it this way a conduit that supply my fan base not all of my family but part of my fan base and in that particular year it got cut off i won't go into the details but i was well vexed well upset <laughs> and it took me 12 months to put my own hand in my own pocket to pay off some of my costs so lesson learned about that definitely lesson learned but despite a really good budget you know incidentals happen so yeah factoring some incidentals 
I would definitely say the what ifs. What if I don't get everybody? This budget is really, really good for you to see how much it will cost to put on a show. Will it cost you £500, £1,000, £2,000, £3,000 to put on a show? I mean, even more, depending on where you're going and how you're going to advertise it and who you're paying and videoing and all this kind of stuff. It costs money. And if you've got that, at least you're forearmed. And you can think of, well, if it, if I get to that point of no return and I'm going to push because I've only got 10 tickets, but I'm going to perform like crazy for these 10 people, I have it within my resources to cover the costs, that's fine. So a budget is really good and all, the whole money thing, really think about it carefully. And of course, you want to make profit. You want to cover your costs because... And you've got to pay yourself. Don't forget to pay yourself. Make sure you're one of the persons that get paid. And you want to have profit because you can play it back into your music to do more with your music, whether put it towards the next recording, whether it's get some new equipment, whatever it is, courses, whatever you need. Coaching courses with Millicent Stevenson. Hey, how about that? <laughs> so, yeah, um, the budget, as I say, put something in for incidentals. I think for me... One of the shows I had, I decided to burn a limited edition of singles last minute um, of Take Me to the King um, with GLR Records. And I had permission to do that. And that cost me to, to do that, you know, and, and to do that. But it's like a last minute thought. Um, I mean, one of the other incidents I can think of is when I work with Crescent Theatre, you can advertise within the theatre um at a free cost a4 in certain places and that's fine they're happy for you to do that and it was sort of so many weeks before the show because obviously they got lots of shows going so there's all kind of rules but outside i'd have to pay for that and i'd have to get it done and i had to go and find a printer and i had to go and find a designer and that was something i just kind of you know came across so incidentals happen still under the heading of funding um maybe think about sponsors and grants um you know the arts council help musician in the uk maybe where whichever country you're in there are going to be people out there or organizations that will give funds for putting on shows um you know sometimes if you link it with a charity you know you can be raising funds for charity and some of the funds go towards covering the cost of the concert and some of the funds go to the charity so there are different ways of kind of handling the funding side to make sure you are not out of pocket. Um, advertising space, you might want to think about advertising, you know, businesses pay you and then you advertise them. And, and I did that with one of, ooh, which one was it? Not just jazz, three, I think. And um, I did advertising. So then what I did was to advertise these organizations on my website and on my socials to my email list. And on the day they had a, t a chance to talk about them. So, you know, different sort of advertising packages. So the whole thing of funding, really think about it. Please, please do not just think creatively about the songs and the band and what you're going to wear, because that is not going to pay the bills. Of course, it's going to attract people to the show, but it's not going to pay the bills. You've got to think about the money side carefully. No different to your household bills. But again, it depends how you you think about money, isn't it? But with the show, these are some tips. Um, I would also say that as your show grows, if you find that your first show is successful um, and you put on your next and your next and your next, your show is going to grow then the, the budget's going to grow as well. Everything's going to get more. Um, if your show doesn't do well the first time, but the, the, the financial difference isn't too, too much, but you're still confident to a second one, I'd go for it, but just tweak things in terms of your budget. You know, is there something you should not have spent out on? Is there something that you really needed that you didn't buy, which would have helped you to have done well with the show next time, maybe get that. So, you know, just some tweak things would be helpful there. And um, my third point is da, 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 team, ma, 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 team. Actually, all of my words today are short. Fans, funds, team. I should have made a headline with that, shouldn't I? What do I mean by teams? Um, you can't do it all by yourself. Okay. And this is to someone who tried it all by herself. <laughs> 
Not just Charles one, the first one I did was all me. I was, and still am, for all my shows, the executive director. I'm the person who thinks about the money, may have to put some money in or find the money. I'm the executive director. I'm also the creative director. I'm also the music director because I run the band. I'm also the performer. I'm also handling ticket sales, um, liaising with the theatre, doing the sales, the admin, the PR, all these kind of things that you need to do to make a show successful. So when my first show, because I didn't know, I just thought, well, I like organising, I like putting on parties and I like getting things wrong. I'll do it myself, easy peasy. I did it myself. I did struggle in some areas and then a good friend who came along from my first one said, look, you know, you can't do it all yourself. I'll help you next time with the ticket sales. I said, oh, great. And so that was my first kind of person that became part of my team. Um, and then I collared my husband to be my um, <laughs> compare, but then he got hell up in traffic. So my son did it. And ever since then, my son's done it. And he, my husband that got that point job back. <laughs> my son does a very good job <laughs> but um by the time i got to not just jazz five i had about 25 people on team you know and that includes band singers dancers photography video lighting sound the lot it's about 25 people and um i remember watching um beyonce's net it's on netflix where she's she's coachella valley music and arts festival it's on the netflix show and looking at the background of her setting that show up because i just was fascinated by the way she said it to me. In fact, I wasn't going to watch it at first. I thought Beyonce was doing her thing. I wasn't watching it. My, my family said, watch it's really good. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And also Tina Turner, who's like, I just idolise Tina Turner. But they both mentioned the, the, the thing about having large teams and the thing about you being that individual that goes on stage to provide the money and to pay the team and, and I think you can already see how these three things I've chosen work in. If you've got the fans, it streams into your income stream, which streams into paying for your cost, which then makes you happy to go on to perform. They're all connected. They're not just like separate things in music. Your music business is all connected. So, you know, having a team, let me just focus more on the team rather than the money thing, but having a team means you don't have to do it all yourself. You can delegate. And I remember the first one, um, you know, which wasn't, you know, organizing it was cool. It wasn't that stressful, but going on stage and thinking, hmm, yeah, yeah, this is fine. And then it was, a, I think it was the second or the third one. I thought, you know what? I really need to give some of the responsibilities off to other people because I want to go on stage not feeling tired. <laughs> You know, because you're like before you're like getting things, is it going to work? Is that going to work? It's da, 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 da. Because you're handling too much of the organizing and the planning of that. So get, having a team, I would definitely say will take the stress off and will allow you to do what you need to do, whatever you choose to do in terms of all the jobs that need doing. And also avoid you getting ill or burning out. I didn't become ill. I didn't burn out. But certainly the next day, I think on my... My YouTube website, if you go back a few years, um, I did put up a after show video of how exhausted I felt. And I mean, literally, I think it was actually number one or number one or number two. And I had to, the next day, I remember the next day because someone had gone home with their security fobs that the theater had given me. And they said, if you don't bring them back out, we'd charge you. <laughs> so the next day I had to run around to somebody's house to get that and I had to, get some other things back so i was really tired i'm like i just want to be in bed you know so i kind of learned like i don't want to be tired the next day i want to chill and i don't want to be running around fixing things so my team grew <laughs> so i'm giving you the benefit of this experience to make it easier for you okay i need to go check if there's any questions so please put them in the chat and whilst you are doing that um I would also say just as a bonus, have a show plan, you know, um, the plan will pull in the whole fans. It will pull in the budget. It will pull in the teams. It will pull in everything. So as a bonus, fourth point rather than three, numero, I don't speak Spanish. It's a cuatro, four, ein, drei, drei, vier, vier, German, vier. Hannah, du, set, net. I don't know if that's the right one for Korean, but there you go. 
number four is to have a show plan um because if you think about the whole thing and this is what i did with my shows i would uh, 12 months before i'm thinking of the whole thing in fact from lockdown i've been thinking about number six i've just because everybody's just getting back into work and getting money sorted i've got to plan i'm just getting my gigs back i'm just getting back up to up to speed so i am planning my number six um because when i hit it's gonna land peeps it's gonna be rocket fire <laughs> but you do need to have a plan so whether you're using post-it notes whether you're using your phone to document that whether you're getting i'm old-fashioned i like a book pen and paper whatever you want to do you need to plan and think about all the things don't rush into a show here's a tip do not rush into i'm going to do it tomorrow i'm going to do it next month or the month after plan it plan it well execute it and manage as you go through and juggle as you go come and deal with the incidentals um it's, it's going to be great it will be great if you just pace yourself because at the end of the day you have to go on stage and deliver and you need to look as fresh as a daisy Bling. Bling. i should have one of those little effects shouldn't i daisy and sparkles <laughs> All right, um, let me go turn and look at the questions. Um, 25 secrets, don't forget to grab this whilst you're waiting or after this show. Nice free download for you for just sh showing up today, for liking, subscribing, following and commenting. 25 secrets of a successful gigging musician, singer, rapper and spoken word artist. And or 10 reasons why they'll pay you before gig day on www.successbeyondthescore.com forward slash forward slash free gifts links are in the description and as i say i've got a discount on um one of my courses if you're interested in learning how to get gigs from scratch go over to the store check that out okay let's go let's go lots of chatter greetings from gary yes faye oh great hi faye um hello sunray how do you know the difference between friends, fans, and followers, Sunray? <laughs> Good question, Sunray. Friends, fans, and followers. Okay. Friends are the people you would go out with. People you will talk to about what's happening in your life. Uh, the people you sometimes fall out with. The people who kind of know the side of you, who like you for who you are. And they're not expecting you to be this singing, dancing person every time they see you. That's friends. And friends are also people who will come and support you. They'll come to your show and they'll support you because they like what they do. you do. They like your gifting and your skills. They really push you on. They provide that sort of wind beneath the wings of you. Those are kind of your friends. Friends kind of say be also kind of fans as well. You know, just love what you do and support you um friends although they may be kind of fans may not come to your gigs but they will still say have a great time thinking for you praying for you helping you they'll still do that fans are people who don't know you a true fan is someone who doesn't know you who loves your music who signed up for your stuff who is going to buy your products that's a true mark of a fan and they're going to buy your tickets a friend may not buy your tickets they may stay and watch it or watch replays or whatever that's that's kind of the difference and you're okay with your friend doing that and you should be okay with your friend doing that because they're there to support the side of you that a fan can't a fan does not know the real you and if a fan showed up to your house tomorrow you'd be like who's this stalker <laughs> you don't want them in your house because it's private you know you may plan to have a dinner with fans because that's a competition you're running or something you're doing but even then it's very limited so if you think about the events you've been to of artists you love as a fan you don't have any time with them you probably read about them on socials or in the paper or whatever but you would not be able to go to backstage and be with them unless you buy a ticket it's all price related people you know you won't be able to shake their hand or do the high fives or whatever unless you buy because they are an entity that there's some distance 
I think as an individual um, DIY musician, you know, we sort of traverse this kind of fan friend thing a lot. Um, I mean, some of the artists I can think of, I mentioned Beyonce and Tina Turner, you know, they'll have bodyguards, you know, um, someone like me, I don't have bodyguards and sometimes I think maybe I should. But then I guess um, people kind of know their distance and if they don't, we have to sort that out. And that's kind of the difference between the fan and the friend. I hope that helps. It's a little bit of a, there is a very separate thing. For me, I keep them very separate. So as I say, I would not want fans to be turning up to my house. I would not want that. And if friends start to get a little bit too, um, oh my, I'm innocent, you're great, you're this, you're that, and it's just too much for me, I'll just kind of, eh. You know, I need a friend. I don't need the fan. You know, that's a bit separate. And then you mentioned a third thing, followers. Yeah, followers are just followers. They will like your social media. They may read your newsletters to your emails. They may um, receive information about you, but that's about it. They're just following you. They're not going to buy a ticket. They just follow you. Um, not stalker follow you. I mean, follow you socially online or you sometimes I go to events and people go, oh yeah, I saw you perform at such and such. Oh yeah, you were really good. Or I follow you online. Oh great. Yeah. You know, they are followers. The person who says I gave your name to so-and-so are like your super fans because they're like, I'm going to help you get work because everybody needs to know about you. So I hope that helps in just defining that. If you go back to my episode, I think it was, I said two, you know, the can your music, does your mu music have the juice? I can't remember my titles now. I have to scroll and find it for you right now. Does your music have the juice to pull a crowd? I mentioned about fans there. What would you say is the best timeline for the data notice? Yeah, I think, um, the data notice has a lot to do, uh, Gary, with your relationship with your fans. So if they're the kind of people who rock up to everything you're doing without you inviting them. So say you are performing at a concert tomorrow and you tell them, hey, fans, I'm performing at this concert, not one you've put on, someone else has put on and they all turn up. You've got a very responsive fan fan base. And then if you go to another thing, you go, I'm doing so and so and they all turn up or some of them turn up, or a few of them turn up, you've got a responsive fan base. So um, you could probably find that if they respond quite quickly to that, you could put on a show and give a short window and they respond. I am not a risk taker. So if you're a risk taker, you'd be comfortable with that. I like to give my fans a good few notice because they say there's some people, they go like 12 months, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they put it in their diary. For some people put in diaries, some people say, I'll wait. So let me go back a bit. They're different types of personalities. There are people who are just highly responsive, who will do things now. There are people who are diarize everything like crazy. I'm one of those. There are people who do lastminute.com. There's people in between. So, you know, if you you know you've got a show, you've done the planning, you've done all the things, you think, yeah, this is going to work. And you think, right, you can put an announcement saying, show's coming up in six months nine months, save the date. And it's a save the date announcement, save the date, save the date, save the date. And then as you're going along, you do your different sort of communications. You want to get to a point where you can say tickets are now on sale and get it now type things and really push the ticket sales for that. And then there's lots of promo that you need to do. So for me, I found that I plan 12 months in advance and say my shows, you should be July, somewhere around just after Christmas, January, January, February. Yeah, about six or seven months, I, I'm, I'm giving out notices to people. And then people who are really advanced planners will say, oh, I'm going to be on holiday, book me a holiday, you know, because you get that and you go, oh, should I change today? And you, you can't, you, I don't think you should, you know, you just get on with it. You've got other fans and just push out. So I hope that helps, Gary. It's going to be a case of testing, but um, yeah, test and um, give notice and promote and uh, see how it goes. And in the following time, the next time you do it, because especially if the show successful, you will know if you need to give people more time or less time. Um, Green Pro, how about timing, i.e. near payday for putting on show? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. That's a really good one. Um, 
I think when I did my shows, I did them, was it the beginning, the first week of the month? Because people would get paid. I have to go back and look. Yeah, I think mine was... I moved it around different times just to test it. I remember one was the beginning of August. One was the end of July. One was the beginning of July. But I tended not to put it in the middle because people's money run out by then. <laughs> so typically people in the UK get paid towards the end of the month or... Yeah, usually towards the end of the month used to be the thing and somewhere around the, the beginning, isn't it? So that's what I would do um, is to do that. Um, so yeah, timing around payday is good because people go, I had people say, oh, well, I get paid, so should, then I'll get my ticket. So <laughs> that's good. It's a good point, Green Pearl. Good one. <laughs> Gary, you remember the CDs? Yeah. <laughs> um, Green Pearl, hey, did you sell your T-shirt at your show? Yeah, I did. Um, I, I created this one particular year as merchandise because I learned about merch. So one year it was music, one year it was T-shirts. Then I had a couple of hoodies and people said, oh, I want hoodies. But I didn't put those on because I was quite, quite tired trying to get that all sorted. But I might do that for my number six because there were people interested. But yes, I sell my T-shirts at my show. I don't. They don't do well at gigs. I tend to find that they do well at show because people want memorabilia of the show. Um, so, you know, they, they don't didn't do that well at gigs for me. Um, but CDs always go down well at all my gigs and everywhere I go. Um, Sunray, how do you know who to trust for your team? Hmm. You know what? It's 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 really again how to trust relationships. Um, if you're going for people you don't know, then you need to vet them, interview them, get some references, recommendations. Um, like I mentioned with hobby and business, um, the episode was, um, where did it go? Episode seven, I talked about hobby and business. I mentioned my account that said, you do not give people, do not put people in charge of your checkbook and your bank account, that kind of thing. So for my show, I have a really trustworthy friend. I can trust her so well with money. She just handles my tickets. She is really good. And then our second person, that's it. They're so trustworthy. No, you can't have them. They're mine. <laughs> They're trustworthy. Um, so I would say you've got to put someone in charge of tickets. If you're using taking cash, who you really trust, you know, and I would say have someone else who you also trust who can just pass by unannounced, just make sure everything's going right, who can probably um, take some of the money away from the, the cash desk um, so that there's no sort of threats to for any um, being robbed or whatever. Um, I would certainly say, I mean, nowadays the people are moving over to all the cashless society, so a lot of things. I mean, most of my ticket sales apart from cashless society, because on the day I've got a credit card machine, so people can do things through by card. Um, most of my uh, sales for tickets are in advance. I get as much sold in advance, in advance, in advance. So all that handling is done in advance. Um, trust is going to be down to experience with your friends will be put in place. Um, just think of um, what area you're giving them, assigning them to look after. That's something is low risk rather than high risk. That's another thing you can do. I'm just looking at my notes here. So if that is not clear for you, Sunray, please just go back through and let me know on the chat. Come through, Madame Linguistics. I don't get that joke, but I've seen the XD is a smiley one. So yeah. Coach Paulette Kumar. Hello, Paulette. Hi, all the way from New York. How can I create a team to help with the show? Yeah. I would say um, to create a team, um, start with friends. Start with friends that are up for it <laughs> or up for it. And they'll tell you what role they will do. They'll say, I will handle the ushering or I will handle your merch sales or I will handle announcements. So start with people. Um, actually, go one step be be before that. What roles do you need filling? So list the roles you need filling and then think of, yeah, so and so's really good. They got a good voice. They could do that. Oh yeah, so and so, and ask them. Um, the other thing is you could have roles that you give to fans. You know, so some fans are so. I was watching. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? He's a country singer in the states, and he has a song 
Dirt Road Dirt Road I watched him on Amazon. Oh gosh, his name will come back to me. Anyway, what he did was to get some, he got a fan to look after his merch table for him. And that really worked. And that fan eventually became a singer and what have you. But um, you can actually just get your fans, you know, you're going to have your super fans, the ones who are always in contact, who say, hey, I know you got your show going, but if you need help, I'm there, <laughs> you know, cool, give them, give them a job to do. So that's another way of getting your team. Of course, you can hire in teams, so you could Google search events, organizers, events, companies, and they'll have teams of people you can hire in. There's a cost associated with that, so back to your budget for that. So I hope that helps Paulette. Um, gosh, the time's going. Let me read through these. Um, where did I go? Venues book years in advance as well. That's true, Green Pearl. Some venues book years in advance. If you want to get some of the large establishments, you've got to book two years. When I'm booking in the Crescent Theatre, I have to book 12 months. This is pre-lockdown, 12 months in advance. Have to sort my dates out if I want the main house. If I want the other room, not so much, but I have to do it. Yeah, in some place it's two years in advance. Um, I have brides. I have a bride who's booking me two years in advance. I had a bride who booked me four years ago. It's like crazy for certain venues, really. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Where were we going to? For our first show, what's the best type of venue? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. I would say if you're not certain on your numbers, go small. There is no shame in that. I remember when I was going to start out, I thought oh, I've got to get a big place, but I wasn't confident. I wasn't certain how many people were going to come. I wasn't certain about how the money side was going to go. I wasn't certain. If you're not certain, go small. Um. At the time when I did my first one, I didn't have a lot of communication with my fan base. My fan base was quite small. So again, I was like, go small. So if you know, you know, I can guarantee, you can guarantee 30 people, you can guarantee 50 people, you can guarantee 100 people. And this is not just, I think I can get 100, I think I can get 50, I think I can get 30. You got concrete evidence. You spoke into your fan base. You say, if I put on a show, in 12 months time, will you come? And they say yes. Then you can say, okay, I've got 50 yeses, I've got 100 yeses, I've got 5,000 yeses. You can then plan accordingly. But even so, I would, if you've got 100 yeses, I'd get a venue for 80 or 70. Because sometimes those 100 change their mind. Sometimes it's good just to have 70 full seats and a waiting list because sometimes people change out. Um, they can become ill and something happens and you can switch out and all that. So just a little less rather than a lot more, rather than have more than you can do. Um, so hopefully that will help with um, your first show. What type of venue? Sorry. So depends on your genre. Pubs, they have function rooms, um, wine bars. Um, bum, bum, bum. churches, if it's a, a gospel event, um, community halls, your cricket club might have a space, your rugby club might have a space, you know, there's just so many places that you can use for venues, um, which matches the genre of music you do. That's really important. Um, as I say, you're on a side of caution, so your budget is manageable. Um, you can, some venues have deals, like when I did the Crescent Theatre, they had a Music Monday, so you had Monday evening in the bar, £60, all in. That was like a deal, because what they did, they would produce my flyers for me, just A4 flyers that they put out. Um, I could have their PA system in the bar, it was 60 seater, the bar was there you know, tickets, the lot, they took a cut of that, they had bar sales, it worked. So check out places that are music, that put on music and they have deals and see if the deals matches your pocket. Um, you might also want to think about somewhere that's already got footfall. What I mean by that, a venue where they've already got people coming in. So like Pizza Express in, in the UK um, have nights when they put on music and they invite musicians to use that space. Um, I think Costa, was it Costa Coffee? One of the coffee shops, they actually have a space as well. So just check out these places and they've got footfall, 
So that helps in terms of the fan base. If you've got a small fan base, you can say, okay, at least I can guarantee some people from them coming and mine, make it a great night. So have, check that out too. Um, for show sure. venues, book use, and how can I create a team done that one? Parasocial relationships are a crazy thing. Yeah, you're right. Parasocial ones are crazy. Um, whoops. I think I have frozen. Let's have a look. Yeah, I understand you can hear me, but for some reason I am frozen. I think it's because I've been talking for very take this off i am going to i need to stop actually i just realized i've been talking for the longest there's so many great great questions and i know you can't see me um i'm gonna have to reset my camera and everything so um i am going to do the rest of this with just my picture on to save me getting up and doing this let me just go through these questions so what would you suggest for a reasonable amount of prices? Um, reasonable amount of prices, I would say, is depending on who you are. Um, when I say who you are, my price ticket prices aren't the cheapest. My first show started at um, ten pounds, and then my later show, I had VIP tickets at thirty. Um, I was able to pull that off because of who I am and what I do. But I know some artists who do five pounds and seven pounds, which I think they should do more, but that's what they want to do. So the thing to do with the mathematics, and hopefully you can still hear me okay. Yes, that's great. The thing to do with the mathematics is to um, get your costs, toss them all up, get the, the amount of seats, top that all up, do a little division, if I've done my maths right, that's right. Yes, a division. <laughs> and you'll get your price for per seat and then a little bit on top for profit. So that's the way I would calculate my ticket prices. That's where I did that. So I hope that helps. Um, <laughs> even in New York, says Coach Paulette. Thank you so much. Um, let me see. Melissa, what do you do? This is just for reading my pattern. This has been very helpful and having put on a few shows, this will help going for keep up the good work. Frozen up my head, I can still hear you. Okay, great. I have answered all the questions. If you have any more, please put them in the comments. This has been my longest um, podcast episode. I think this is great. This is an indication that you. this is a hot topic and I'm so happy about it. I'm even thinking that maybe I can put on a webinar where I really go into more details on putting a show. And if this is something you would like, put that in the chats, put that in the comments, go over to successbeyondthescore.com forward slash free gifts, grab a free gift, get onto my mailing list, let me know. And I will let you know when I can put that on because it's another course I'm, I was thinking of writing. and I didn't want to rush and do it. So if it's something you'd be, you think would be great, please let me know and I will put that on for you thank you so much for bearing with me i just think my ipad and this software i'm using for my video just crashed it's been like over an hour or so under an hour so thank you so much i'll be back on monday where i'll be looking at da, 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 three reasons why you should contact the sound engineer before your gig that should be exciting so i will see you soon Bye for now and thank you so much for being with me. You are being awesome. Bye for now.